So with the carcass of this cabinet all glued up and done, we can move on to the back panel. So for me, this, this is a lot more fun. Um, and I did a couple of things here that you don't have to do. So I'm just gonna explain that real quick, but I didn't really go into too much um, detail showing how I did that. But basically I did some veneer back panels. Any chance you get to use veneer, it's always a good option. That way you can, uh, you can do things that you can't do with solid wood. Um, for instance, uh, the back panels, I've got this left panel, and it's some crazy spalted wood um, and it's gonna be running vertical and then the one that's open um, is gonna run horizontal and it's, it's just kind of fun. And what ends up happening with this, so these are the door panels which are veneered too. I used a quarter inch Baltic birch as the core, uh, making sure that the orientation, I'm always keeping that you know perpendicular, that, that 90 degree uh, plywood how plywood's made, that way it stays a lot flatter. But basically, uh, this grain is a continuation of the right panel. So when you look through this cabinet, it's gonna be a continuation through the door. A um, little bit crazy, but kind of fun to make that little extra effort. Um, another thing about the veneer panels is basically, this is a rabbited panel, and what you'll see is uh, it creates a shadow gap. And I've got a really tight shadow gap. I think in the plan I have like an, maybe a 16th, which is pretty tight if you're gonna use solid wood. You may wanna bump that out to about an eighth because seasonally that solid wood panel is gonna expand and contract across the width, right? So the length is not gonna change. So that shadow gap, you'll notice, you know, it's gonna be you know, tight, uh, tighter than, and looser, uh, bigger and smaller as the seasons change. So not a big deal, just wanted to point that out, just in case there's some confusion um, as you see me use this stuff and I haven't really shown you how I did it. Um, but basically I put it in my vacuum bag. Uh, if you don't have a vacuum bag, you can just clamp it in between some coals. Um, that's how I used to do it. So moving on, um, we're gonna do some layout. So for the joinery of the back panel, it's pretty easy. It's just, it's almost like a tongue and groove type situation. So on the rails, it's just a little half inch tenon uh, that's gonna happen. And then we're basically gonna groove all the inside edges. It's gonna be a quarter inch by half inch. And then our back panel will be rabbited back for that. The one thing I do wanna point out, since I want this, uh, the face of this to be flush to this, you know, there's gonna be that little shadow gap, but I want this to come out pretty flush to the, to the actual stars and rails. I will take my marking gauge, um, basically, kind of what I'm getting at here is, I, it doesn't have to be dead centered, uh, the quarter inch groove, uh, doesn't have to be dead centered in the three quarter inch stuck. If I do that, this is not a true half inch, so it won't come out flush. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm basically gonna take my marking gauge, set it on the face and set the knife to the back edge. And now I can use this to set to the face and then lay out these marks. And I'll go over to the router table and do this with a wing cutter. So the first thing to do is create the groove. Now I'm gonna do this with this wing cutter that's got a bearing and it gives me a half inch depth of cut. Um, and I'm gonna set the outside edge of that bearing to this fence, so this little you know, cheap little piece of wood, little notch that cut around it. Um, I'll basically put a straight edge and make sure that bearing is perfectly in line with the outside of that fence. And that way I'm riding on the fence and not just that bearing, which can get away from you. Um, so another thing to point out, you probably can't see this, but this is not in the center. Um, if it were in the center, the way I typically go about it is laid out. Then I use this cutter, which is um, just over an eighth inch and I'll you know, set it close, I'll run one and flip it and run it. That way I get dead center and for me, even if it's a little bit over a quarter inch, it doesn't matter if the case is I need it dead center because then I can match my tenon by doing the same thing, flip flopping it in this application. However, that's not gonna be the case for this. So this is a little more tricky because I do want that panel, which wasn't a true half inch, I want it flush to the outside face of this. If I didn't care about that, I could set it center and my panel would be set back in a little bit, which is fine too. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. 
So I have the back mark, which is the important one, because that's where the back of the panels is going to go straight in, and the face of it gets rabbited. I'm going to lay that down, set this up, run, you know, face down on all the parts, get that cut, and then I'm going to lower it a bit, adjust it until I get about a quarter inch um, in width, uh, so that way I can match that with the tenon. All right. Okay, as you noticed, I climb cut it first, but I'm not going to full depth. I'm barely doing like a 16th and try, you know, being in control. So the reason I do that is it gives a very crisp line and it's not going to tear out. If I just went in and did it conventionally, full half inch depth, this will all look ragged. So again, that's a technique I've become comfortable with over the years, of the many years I've been doing this. Um, so don't do it if you're not comfortable, just know the risk. Uh, it can get away from you. So just be very, very careful. Okay, so now that we have our grooves all done, uh, it's time to do the tenons. So I probably made this more overcomplicated than it needs to be, um, but I just kind of want to expose people to the ideas of shims and um, the L fence. It's something that's been around for a very long time, but you just don't see many people using it. So the reason I'm using the L fence for this application, I mean, this does many, many different things, but for this application is uh, simply I use it when I do dado. So, you know, typically I need a half inch dado, so I set up a stack that's about five eighths, and then you bury it until you get the desired tenon length. And usually, how you do that is you have a sacrificial piece that you clamp down to your fence, so you're not screwing up your fence, and you cut into it. And then you have like 20 of these weird pieces of wood kind of laying around the shop. So instead, I use the L fence because it does the same thing. The bottom of this L is just above the actual height of the blade. Now I can bring this in and out and that will deliver the length of the tenon. So I've got that set up. It's just clamped with a couple of these dovetail match fit clamps to my fence. Works really well. And now um, it's, it's time to set the height. So this is where I made things probably more complicated than need be. This is our layout. We already have it. Right here is what we're trying to match. We're trying to match the tenon for this. So you could start face down, you know, put this down there, raise the blade until it just comes to the very top of that uh, groove there or the bottom of that groove there. And then you can, you know, run all one side since this is not centered. One, uh, do all one side, then flip it over, raise it back up, uh, you know, raise it up until you get to the bottom of that one and run it again and obviously do a test piece so you can sneak up on that fit. So what I've done, which is probably not real necessary for what this is, but it's kind of how my brain works and I use a lot of shims in, in my shop and in my work, is I basically calipered, uh, I calibrated this measurement. So I took this measurement uh, on the fin side, zeroed it, and then came over and remeasured um, the thicker side and that's telling me my difference. So that's telling me how much thicker that is than this fence side Then I can make a shim that size exactly that size. So that's what's on here right now This piece of mahogany just it was laying around um, And I, I sent it for the planer real quick and got it dead on that size. What that allows me to do is run all uh, All sides without having to move anything. I could just go and get it done as long as you've done it accurately
We ran all to one face, and now I should be able to just pop this off. Just held on with two pieces of double stick tape, and we should be able to run the other side now. Also, I want to point out, um, you notice I'm using a piece of wood, uh, plywood, so this is perfectly square, and it's just a good idea to keep that as a reference, uh, or else you could tip it like this and just be a little bit uh, tricky to do. Nice. And so everything lines up perfectly flush and looks nice and tight. So we should be good to go ahead and knock them all out. So we have all the grooves and the tenons done. I'm just gonna do a quick dry fit to make sure Everything is looking good. Pretty nice, we can grab a frame like that, that's pretty good. So that's gonna be the back frame, that divider's gonna go there. Back panel is open, this panel's behind uh, the door. So, yeah, now it's just double check the measurements with the plan. Yeah, pretty happy with that. It's always a good idea to uh, work off your actual, you know, I tell students a lot of times, um, you know, you're not just gonna go through the cut list and cut everything out exact. You're gonna work, you work on the case. Something may happen that you have to change something, you know, and then you can adjust that later on. Then you can actually measure the case and then work from that. So you're working from the actual. Um, so that's, that's an important thing. So for me, you know, quick measurement, everything looks dead on the plan. Um, so I can trust my, my panel size. So move on to that. So I've got the panels cut to size and now I need to um, basically create a half inch by quarter nominal um, uh, rabbit. So the thing that I know that's an absolute, it's gonna be a half inch uh, in depth. Uh, so I've taken the bearing off of this. I didn't have a, a bearing that would uh, allow me to get a half inch. I just took that off. My half inch shim. And then this comes up against it like so. So I just, you know, I can rotate this until it just kisses this. And that's gonna get me exactly a half inch. As far as the depth goes, I'll just start off low with the face down, I believe, if I'm thinking right. Yeah, face down. Um, I'll start low, I'll just load this down and then work my way up until I get a fit that I like. So now that I have the uh, rabbit, created the rabbit, um, I'm going to do a little fine tuning. So a couple things I want to point out, you're probably noticing. Um, I didn't have enough quarter inch uh, Baltic birch and since it's kind of hard to get right now at this time, um, just with a lot of the stores uh, being shut down, I just used some MDF for the back panels. Um, and you know, I was very much aware that you're going to see this MDF here, but the, the little Shadow gap is a 16th, so you don't see it. It's, it just looks dark, so it should be just fine. So I, I kind of, I knew that was gonna be the situation. Um, another thing is, these panels went in the vacuum bag, then I stroke sanded it. So what you're gonna find is when you put the face down and you create this rabbit, you're gonna have certain areas that might be a little bit thicker than others, like a few thousands. Um, the stroke sander does a really good job. If you were a little bit careless, uh, even sanding it or going for the planer, if your plane is a little bit off, uh, not co-planer to the bed, you'll find this happens. And when I teach, this is always the case. So instead of trying to get you know the results off of the router to where it fits in everywhere, I get it where it's a little bit snug, and then I go around and test it. So this is perfect, and this is a little bit tight. I'm not gonna to try to force this, because the amount of times I've told students, do not try to just slap it together, because when you take it apart, you'll break it, and they always break this edge, the front edge, the fin edge. So just get it, you know, take the edge to it and run it down, and so you can feel, okay, it loosens up there, but it's pretty tight all the way, and just test that. 
Now, instead of going to the route and trying to raise it up a little bit and mess around, um, I'm just gonna use my shoulder plane. Um, so I'm gonna use this guy, a couple of hits and it'd be done. And, you know, I wanna point out too, remember you're gonna finish sand this out. So this is 180'd. Um, and then the back's gonna go down to 240, you know, it's gonna go 240, 320, but any sanding you do on the back is gonna change the fit. So again, I'm trying to get a little bit snug, knowing when I sand this out, um, you know, I'm gonna probably pre-finish these, it should be a nice fit. You just need to keep that in mind. Panels pre-finished, uh, the edges are, so now I'm ready to glue up. get the ends perfectly flush. But if you don't do this, then that shadow gap will not be even. So the next thing to do with the back panel is to flush all of these dolls and rails up together. So the two panels are totally finished, so I wanna protect those. They're actually set back maybe 10 thousandths of an inch, if that, from the stars and rails, so that kinda of helps. Um, so tape it off, then I'll use some paper like this, take that on when I get ready to spray the rest of it. It may seem like a lot of work to get hair, but it really makes a big difference uh, in my opinion. You can really sand the panels out really flat uh, instead of trying to work it uh, once it's all done. So I'm going to quickly hand plane it, then sand it, and then tape, tape off the panels and spray it, and then this guy's done. And that's going to finish up this episode. And in the next episode, we'll get onto the actual door. So now that the back panel is completed and glued up and totally finished, uh, it's time to start chiseling out the back corners here. So remember we did this rabbit whilst it was uh, dry fitted together without the divider in and we used a wing cutter. So we've got this big radius in the corners. So we just need to take care of it. It's pretty simple, a nice sharp chisel. I like to use something around an inch wide. And then I use the established rabbit already to just pare down. Uh, I will say you can totally screw things up here pretty easily too because this is basically a big metal wedge and I've seen it where students want to come and tackle the long grain and they just try to take out that whole thing and whack down and you can imagine what's going to happen, it's going to split. So I always tackle the end grain. So I come in and I will pare down and I basically create this, this staircase. And what I'm doing is, I'm, as I'm doing it, I'm always removing wood from behind the chisel so I'm not creating a wedge. And then I'll go back and keep working it down up to that corner. So I'll show you my method, uh, but just take your time and get it nice and square. You can undercut it a little bit too. I usually have a block of wood just to test it instead of trying to get the whole panel in there. For some reason it's not fitting because this panel is going to fit pretty tight. It's also going to be used to square this case up if, if it needs it. So I'll just bring this in there and make sure that corner's nice and clean. So I'm just shooting it to fit. Um, it was really close, it was maybe a 30 second if that. So a few passes on this. Um, and since this is finished, instead of it dragging it across the table saw and stuff, it should be uh, not faster and 
more pleasant to be honest. 